My name is Julie Rees and I'm a complex case manager working for the Macmillan Prostate Cancer Team. I'm going to talk to you today about sleep hygiene. Sleep is an essential part of feeling well and happy, but almost everyone experiences problems sleeping at some time in their life. Sleep disruption is common when you may feel emotionally overwhelmed. Anxiety and heightened emotions may significantly interfere with your sleep. Sleep patterns. Bringing sleep patterns under control is important and rest is essential. However, it often takes some time to get problematic sleep under control. Try not to sleep late into the day after a sleepless night. This can lead to a disrupted sleep pattern. And it's important too to keep your mind occupied with activities like reading, games or puzzles. This can also help you to feel naturally ready to sleep. So paying attention to good sleep hygiene is the most important thing you can do to maintain good sleep. Exercise is very important. Take regular exercise each day, preferably in the morning. There's good evidence to suggest that regular exercise improves restful sleep. Studies also show that exercise can reduce the length of time it takes to fall asleep. However, don't exercise just before going to bed, as this can increase alertness. It's important to get regular exposure to outdoor or bright lights. This can increase quality and duration of sleep. Light keeps your circadian rhythm healthy, which in turn affects hormones. Circadian rhythms are linked to your body's internal clock and your sleep-wake cycle. They are important in determining your natural sleeping and feeding patterns. Brainwave activity, hormone production, cell regeneration and other important biological processes are all determined by this cycle. Don't engage in stimulating activity just before bed, for example using a computer or phone, because the blue light exposure tricks the body into thinking it's daytime. It's important to eat a balanced diet and avoid eating late into the evening. So you want to avoid going to bed too hungry or too full. Caffeine can significantly worsen sleep quality as it stimulates the nervous system and can stay in the blood for up to six to eight hours. Also, it's best to avoid drinking alcohol before bed or using it to help you sleep. It may make you drowsy, but it doesn't improve sleep and you may find that you wake up to go to the toilet. Avoid too much liquid before bed, but make sure that you keep well hydrated throughout the day. Also, if you're a smoker, avoid smoking before going to bed, as nicotine is also a stimulant and will keep you awake. Short power naps of up to 30 minutes can be, be beneficial, but avoid long naps as they can impair sleep quality. Keep a regular sleep routine, try to wake up at the same time each day, and also try to go to bed at the same time each day too. Keep a regular nighttime routine, try to do the same things each night before going to bed so your body knows the cues for sleep. For example, some people like to have a nice warm bath or a milky drink or like to read or listen to music. But you need to be aware of how naps affect you. Some people find that daytime naps help them to sleep better at night, while others sleep less well after them. It's important to relax and to give yourself at least an hour to an hour and a half to wind down before going to sleep. Use this time to process the day's events and do something relaxing. You can try muscle relaxation to help de-stress and unwind, for example, a nice warm bath or soaking your feet or having a massage if you have someone that's able to give you one. You can use music, reading or mindfulness to relax before going to bed to get into the right frame of mind for sleep. 
make sure that you switch off your phone and keep it out of the bedroom as all electronic screens are best avoided an hour before bed. If you lie awake in bed for more than 20 to 30 minutes, then get up and go to a different room and participate in a quiet activity, for example, reading or television. Then return to bed when you feel sleepy. And you can do this as many times as you need to during the night. The bedroom environment is important. So you need to keep the temperature in your bedroom at a comfortable level, not too hot or too cold. It's important to keep the bedroom dark enough to facilitate sleep and also as quiet as you can. So that may mean using thicker curtains or sleeping in the, the back of your house or even using earplugs to avoid being woken by street noise and other noises. Only use your bedroom for sleep, sex and getting dressed, not watching television. And if you're someone who has concerns as they lay in bed in the evening, then keep a notepad and pen by your bedside to write down any worries that you have or to do a, a make to do list uh, for the next day to just help facilitate sleep. So keeping a sleep diary can be useful as it may uncover lifestyle habits or daily activities that contribute to sleeplessness. It can also reveal underlying conditions that explain insomnia. If you're having trouble sleeping and can't understand why, keeping a sleep diary can help identify what's keeping you awake. Sometimes your sleep troubles are as a result of bad sleep habits, for example, drinking too much caffeine before bedtime, not exercising or poor sleep hygiene. The diary will help to pinpoint if you're consistently waking at a similar time what you've done that day and what you've eaten, etc., to see if there is a pattern. Here's an example of a sleep diary. This one is from the Sleep Council, which you can download from their website. There are others, NHS ones too. And so this one is, is looking at time you went to bed, time you got up, uh, whether you fell asleep easily or with difficulty, the number of times you woke, how many hours you slept in total, whether your sleep was disturbed and what by, or whether you awoke refreshed or not. And then the next part in the evening, how much caffeinated drinks you consumed, whether you exercised, whether you napped and for how long, and the likelihood of dozing during daily activities. It also looks at your mood during the day and whether you've consumed alcohol and uh, what sort of meal you've had and an hour before bed whether you've included reading or, or any form of relaxation. These diaries, as I said, can be downloaded or if you need further information it can be obtained from the Macmillan Cancer Support or the Cancer Information Centre. Thanks for watching this video and the contact details are on the screen in front of you.